A very good morning, dear students. This is Dr. Neelu Shivaswa, Assistant Professor in English from Government Digvijay Autonomous PG College, Rajnandgaon. And today I am going to take up a very famous and comical essays of Charles Lamb, a dissertation upon roasted pig. Children, as we all know, that Charles Lamb is known as one of the most lovable and charming essays of English prose, and he is also called the prince among English essays. And I am sure by reading this essay, you will be having an experience of having a conversation with one of your very intimate friends. So uh, we will be taking the theme of the essay and some of the most important passages for explanation as well. So let us start the theme first. So students, we see that Lamb is a writer entirely given to self-expression, but he does not stand between the reader and the world he portrays, nor does he anywhere obtrude himself upon us like uh, an egoistically sublime man. He seems to be rather self-effacing. As we read his essay again and again, there emerges the picture of a spare, slender person of extremely excitable, uh, nervous temperament and of shy, melancholy air. We find that though shy in general society, he was a man of warm and deep affections. As evinced not only by his lifelong devotion to his sister, but by his excessive fondness for the company of his friends. So, this essay, Dissertation upon Roast Pig, is also an autobiographical essay like other essays of Charles Lamb. It reflects Lamb's epicurean taste, his liking for delicious dishes, and his one of the favorite such dish is roast pig. Although Charles Lamb calls it a dissertation, it is not exactly a treatise. Throughout the essay, we can find a vein of humor and fun. Lamb believes that the practice of roasted pigs originated in China when a swine herd named as Hoti and his son discovered this amazing taste accidentally. The story goes like this, when Hoti left for the woods one day, his cottage was under the care of his eldest son called Bobo. This boy loved to play with fire. He allowed some sparks of fire to get into a bundle of straw. Gradually the flames developed and the poor mansion was reduced to ashes. Along with the house was burned the fine litter of nine piglets. This litter was more important than the building because China pigs were considered to be a luxury. Bobo was deeply worried because of the loss of pigs. As he was crying, he smelled a new fragrance and his mouth began to water. Unable to explain these things, he bent down to feel the pig. In this process, he burnt his fingers and to cool them, he applied them to his mouth. A part of the scorched skin of the pig came out with his fingers and for the first time in the history of the world, he tasted. He repeated this experience. At last, he knew that the new smell he had come from the pig. Then he started eating the roast pig. At that time there came his father who began to abuse and beat him. Bobo did not pay any attention to his treatment till he had completed eating. The inquiries made by the father revealed that Bobo was having a delicious experience with the roasted pig. Hoti cursed his son and himself, but Bobo, guided by 
the smell brought out another roast pig he tore the skin and asked his father to eat the burnt pig hoti was wondering whether he should not kill his son for his unnatural thing but as he held the pig with his fingers the fingers were burnt and he put them into his mouth slowly he came to relish it both both father and son sat down to eat and they got up only after they had eaten all the burnt pigs then hoti asked bobo not to reveal the secret to others the neighbors would have stoned them to death because of their new way of eating the pigs still strange stories were spread throughout people noticed that hoti's cottage was being burnt more often now the fires were observed in the day and the night too hoti was no longer found rebuking his son now the neighbors watched them and they at last discovered the secret hoti and bobo were taken to peking for trial there they were truly tried just when the judgment was about to be given the foreman of the jury wanted some of the burnt pigs to be produced all the members of the jury handled it and burning their fingers they put their fingers into their mouths then they declared that hoti and bobo were not guilty because the burnt pig and the roasted one was extremely delicious later the judge purchased all the pigs of the town in a few days his house was observed to be on fire then it followed that every house was on fire throughout the district fuel and pigs became very costly insurance offices were closed after a long time a practical philosopher like locke invented a cheaper way of roasting the flesh of pigs and other animals so this is how the story goes and this is how charles lem tells us the beginning of the art of roasting a pig the essay reveals lamb's epicurean sense at its height lamb considers the roast pig as one of the best delicacies in the world he says of all the delicacies in the whole mandus adibles i will maintain it to be the most delicate princeps epsonionum like a true epicurean lamb describes the taste of this delicate dish there is no flavor comparable i will contend to that of the crisp tawny well washed not over roasted crackling as it is well called the very teeth are <coughs> invited to their share of the pleasure at this banquet in overcoming the coy brittle resistance with the adhesive oleaginous o oh, call it not fat but undefinable sweetness growing up to it the tender blossoming of fat fat cropped in the bud so we see that lamb has a peculiar sense of taste then we also notice that this essay is very much humorous it is full of fun and humor there is abundance of humor in it indeed it is full of fun from beginning to end a fanciful description of the origin of the art of roasting a pig is most amusingly described the humor of this part of the essay is almost farcical 
when a number of pigs were burnt in the fire a strange odor assailed the nostrils of the swine herd son the manner in which the father inti ultimately joins the son at the feast of the burnt pigs is also very amusing the fun becomes hilarious when we are told that fires to the swine herds cottage now became frequent till ultimately the secret became known the account of the trial of father and son is another example of hilarious fun even the judge himself being tempted by the delicious taste of the burnt flesh which had been produced in the court as a specimen set fire to his house in order that his pigs might accidentally get burnt so uh, throughout the essay we find the touch of humor and fun everywhere but one thing which is really very um shocking in this essay is the strange attitude of lamb towards this delicate and meek piglets how can a person like lamb who is so kind hearted who is so soft uh, hearted man can be so cruel towards a uh, delicate uh, organ organism so uh, lamb betrays in fact a strange callousness towards the pig his eloquent praise of roast pig may be all right but the gleeful manner in which he describes the process of pig being roasted shows uh, his cruel nature and this is really very surprising to think about charles lamb then how equably he twirls it round the string he says now he is just done to see the extreme sensibility of that tender age he hath wept out of his pretty eyes radiant jellies shooting stars lamb enjoys the right of the beautiful eyes of a pig melting and dropping in the fire similarly his approving of a pig being whipped to death before being cooked also bespeaks an unfeeling heart in most of his essays lamb appears to be a very kind hearted and merciful person but his completely indifferent attitude to the agony of a pig in the process of being whipped or roasted is totally ununderstandable he is the same author who describes his brother john's love of animal in a manner which seemed to show that uh, he shared that love this is what he has written about john but here he is totally a different a uh, cruel man now if uh, we see the style of uh, charles lamb which has been used in this essay we s- we can say that the style of this essay is s- very lovable and it is so that it wins our admiration it is not a high flown or inflated or embellished style the better part of the essay is written in a simple and straightforward style free from high sounding phrases and from bombastic vocabulary but the high sounding phrases and sentences are not entirely absent they have been used uh, now and then the like uh, the swin heard son's mouth beginning to water is described in these lines a premonitory moistening at the same time overflowed his nether lip the swin heard carrying a stake with which to punish his, his son is described as being armed with retributory cudgel the sharp taste of pineapple is thus conveyed to us she wounded and uh, 
excoriated the lips that approach her and she is a pleasure bordering on pain from the fierceness and insanity of her relish so the style uh, is uh, not highly ornamental but at times he uses a uh, figure of a speech and uh, the figure of a speech which he has used in the essay uh, can be pointed out that uh, like uh, the iteration of which lamb is so fond of appears in the course of this essay again and again an infant pig is prescribed in the following phrase separated by dashes he says i quote a young and tender suckling under a moon old guiltless as yet of the sty with no original speck of the amor amundishe the hereditary failing of the first parent yet manifest his voice as yet not broken another series of phrases separated by dashes occurs when lamb described the crackling of roast pig i quote oh call it not fat but an indefinable sweetness growing up to it the tender blossoming of fat fat cropped in the bud taken in the shoot in the first innocence the cream and quintessence of the child pigs yet pure food the lean no lean but a kind of animal mana and there are a few other examples of also of this kind of writing then uh, we see that charles lamb has used the narrative quality in uh, this essay the story from the chinese manuscript and the anecdote pertaining to lamb's school days give to this essay a narrative quality uh, this narrative quality is an ingredient of many of other lamb's essays this essay is free from learned allusions and references which make some of his essays really very difficult to understand without consulting reference books latin expressions are however very much here to testify to lamb's learning the similes in the sentences which describe the father raining blows upon the young fellow are noteworthy the blows that fell upon the young fellow's shoulders are were as thick i quote as thick as hailstones which bobo he did not any more than if they had been flies so here he has made use of similes then now uh, there is an almost equal proportion of long sentences and short sentences also in this essay just as there is an excellent combination of the simple style of lamb and his high flown inflated style so this is uh, about the style and the theme of the essay uh now we will have uh, some important explanation of this uh, essay so that you may uh be able to explain in, in your examination uh i have taken four of the passages of the um, essay the first one when he says i speak not of your grown porkers things between pig and pox those hobby boys but a uh, young and tender suckling under a moon old guiltless as yet of the sty with no original speck of amori mandisit the hereditary failing of the first parent yet manifest his voice as yet not broken but something between a childish treble and a grumble the mild forerunner or preludium of a grunt 
he must be roasted. I am not ignorant that our ancestors ate them seethed or boiled, but what a sacrifice of the exterior tegumen. So, here Lamb describes how the art of roasting pigs was accidentally discovered. According to him, a roast pig is the daintiest delicacy in the world. In the world of eatables, it is the chief of dainties. Now, in these lines, Lamb says that he does not want to talk of the grown up pigs, they are not fit to be treated as pork as they stand between the fully grown pigs and the young ones. He means the young, young pigs hardly a month old who are still suckling. Such a pig is still clean and not made dirty by the sty who has not still acquired a native love of filth like the biblical man who is born sinner. The pig is also by nature dirty. But a baby pig is still clean and does not show any sign of filth. His voice is still not changed into the grunt of a mature pig. So, according to Lamb, such a young pig is most appropriate for roasting um, uh, a dish. The next uh, piece of explanation is, I quote, Behold him! While he is doing, it seemeth rather a refreshing warmth than a scorching heat that he is so passive to. How equably he toileth round the string, now he is just done. To see the extreme sensibility of that tender age, he had wept out his pretty eyes, radiant jellies, shooting stars. So, in this uh, extract lamb gives a description of a pig when it is roasted he remarks that the young pig seems to feel the refreshing warmth of fire under it rather than the scorching heat the pig twists and turns itself as if delighted by the warmth of fire when the roasting is done the pig's eyes melt and drop out of the heat of the fire, leaving merely empty sockets. Lamb finds beauty even in this state of the pig. According to him, the young pig seems to be so sensitive that it has wept out its pretty eyes, which now appear as bright jellies or shooting star. So, this is uh, our passage where Lamb seems to be very um, heartless man. Next, the next explanation which I have taken is, Pig let me speak his praise is no less provocative of the appetite than he is satisfactory to criticalness of the censorious palate. The strong man may batten on him and the weakling refuse it not his mild juices in these lines lamb has all praise for a pig it is the best delicacy in the world it satisfies the hunger as much as it stimulates the appetite of even the most fastidious eaters in other words it is tasty as well as nourishing Lamb emphasizes the utility of a pig as a dish for all. The healthy and strong persons grow fat by eating it. The persons with weak digestion would also find it nourishing and easily digestible. Thus, a roasted pig is a nourishing diet to both the healthy people as well as those of, sick, of sickly constitution. The last passage which I have taken for um, explanation is, I quote, Methinks it is an ingratitude to the giver of all good flavors to extra domiciliate or send out of the house slightingly uh, under pretext of friendship or I know not what a blessing so particularly adapted, predestined 
I may say to my individual palate it argues an insensitivity insensibility. So, Lamb considers a roast pig as the daintiest delicacy in the world. In a humorous vein, Lamb considers a pig good throughout. Mankind has mixed character, but there is nothing like vice or virtue in a pig. No part of him you can say is better or worse than another. He is the least envious of banquets. He is all neighbors fair. Lamb also says that he likes to share good things with his friends, but he cannot share everything with them. He can freely send to his friends such delicacies as shares, uh, pheasants, partridges, chickens, etc. But he would stop in the case of a roast pig. He cannot share it with anyone. Then Lamb says that it is foolish like King Lear to part with everything who gave everything to his daughters but himself suffered afterwards. He would like to keep the pig for himself for he has got a special right on it. It seems that God has given him a special gift in the form of a pig and by giving it to his friends he would not like to be ungrateful to God. It seems that pig was created to satisfy his palate only and it was determined even before his birth. Under these circumstances, he would be acting wickedly against the wishes of God if he were to transfer the gift of a pig to others. So, these were some of the important passages of uh, the essay dissertation upon roasted pig. So, students, I hope you must have understood the story or the theme of the essay and some of its important explanation. And we can conclude uh, at the end that uh, the, this essay is highly personal. Uh, essay of Charles Lamb in which after having given us the amusing stories connected with the origin of the practice of roasting pigs, he reveals his own temperament and taste and this essay is full of fun and humor and should be read with a spirit of light, fun and laughter. Thank you very much. We will meet in our another lecture soon.